For this video, I'm going to show you how to automate uh, Amazon EC2 services in the context of HP's Operations Orchestration product. Uh, this is a very practical approach to how to use uh, cloud-based server resources um, in an enterprise organization. So let's start in Operations Orchestration. This is Operations Orchestration Studio. This is the authoring environment for creating uh, automations. And if I go to My Ops Flows, you can see I have a folder here, Amazon EC2. Uh, all of the operations in this folder were created uh, automatically using Operations Orchestration Web Service Wizard. Uh, it takes as input uh, EC2's WSDL file and produces operations for all of the uh, EC2 web services, like running instances or describing instances. I had to tweak these a little bit uh, because uh, EC2 uses WS security and I needed to uh, basically provide a Java key store uh, and a few tweaks so that uh, operations orchestration uh, constructed the SOAP messages the way EC2 is expecting it. But once you get through all that detail, uh, someone who doesn't have deep programming experience can leverage these resources in a drag and wire uh, authoring fashion. I'm going to create a new flow here. Start new instances. And this opens the palette in operations orchestration. So here's my new blank flow. I'm just going to drag in the run instance operation onto the canvas. And you can see uh, my start new instance flow is red. This indicates the flow is not runnable. And that's because the success and failure conditions from this operation haven't been connected. Uh, so to fix that I'm just going to create a couple um, endpoints in this in the flow mm -hmm. we'll have one for successful completion and one for failure and I just wire it up like this mm -hmm. and save it mm -hmm. <coughs> now if I just double click on this run instance operation you can see here's all the inputs that the run instance web service takes. And I've already defined a few values here, like prompting the user for the image ID, which is the type of image to use, and uh, the instance type, so we're using M1 smalls. Uh, and then other things we're prompting for here is the minimum and maximum count in terms of the number of servers that are being created. So before I run this, I want to go get uh, an Amazon instance ID. So let's jump on over to the Amazon uh, Council. So here you can see I have zero running instances. Uh, I'll just go over to the instance tab quickly to show you. There's none that are running. I've got three here that uh, are all terminated. Um, and in order to get an instance ID, I'm just going to go to the launch instance uh, panel. This is how you would start an instance manually through the council. And uh, I'm going to take a Fedora uh, uh, instance here, which is a LAMP web starter. That looks like a good one. So I'll just copy uh, this instance ID, but you can see, you know, we've got Windows servers, Linux servers, uh, and, and a whole host of uh, uh, Amazon instances, and you can create your own. We'll come back to operations orchestration and I'll just start a debugging session. <coughs> the debugger here is where you uh, go to debug the flows before they become publicly available on the operations orchestration website. And I'll hit play just to run this flow. So the first thing it's doing is asking me for uh, some information. So here's the Amazon machine instance that I want to stand up. And I will say I want to start, 
let's say three uh, instances minimum, maximum number three. Uh, continue. And now this flow is calling into uh, Amazon Web Services and, uh, and running, starting the run of, of new instances. So if I look at this particular step in the flow, here is the XML returned uh, from that um, call. And here's the instance set and the instance ID. Uh, you can see the state is pending. Uh, that's the first one and, and the second one and so on. Uh, so this uh, XML could then be parsed and I could use that information to uh, connect to and uh, do other things with those instances. If we jump back to the management console and go look over at my instance tab and refresh it, uh, you can see here my three instances already up and running. So just that fast uh, we are able to get a set of instances up and running uh, in Amazon and you can imagine in an enterprise I might want to do things with those instances once they're up and running. So there's a whole set of additional uh, operations that are available uh, within OO like the ability to do things with uh, web servers that might be running on that instance uh, I might want to use FTP uh, to transfer uh, some files uh, up to that instance or up to those instances once it's done. You know, so I can do that just by putting an FTP operation in here. Uh, and then maybe uh, there's some specific SSH uh, shell commands uh, that I want to, uh, to execute uh, on that particular uh, set of instances once they're up and running. So uh, pretty simple to get going with uh, automation. I've got another flow uh, that I created uh, here called terminate instance, a little more complex flow. See first of all we're getting the set of instances that are uh, running or getting the set of instances that are up there if we have any, uh, we're going to iterate over that list to find the ones that are running. I create a list of running instances. If we have any running instances, then we ask the user to pick uh, an instance, and they can pick none, at which case uh, the flow is just going to exit, uh, or they can pick all, uh, in which case it's going to iterate over a list of all those instances, terminating them. Uh, or I can pick a specific instance where it will come over here and terminate one. So once you've debugged and have a flow like this up and running, uh, any user can use it by coming to Operations Orchestration Central. So I'm just going to right click on this and say I want to do an instant run. And this is going to start up and run through the process uh, that I just showed you. So here it said uh, I can pick none, uh, all, or any one of the three instances that uh, it found that were running. Again, this is all done through Amazon's web services. So I'm going to pick 60A7 uh, to terminate. And continue. And that flow is finished. And we, if we jump back to the console and do a refresh here, you can see uh, 60A7 is now shutting down. So this is a really practical way for uh, organizations to start to experiment with Amazon uh, EC2 uh, services and fully automate those services in the context of their enterprise. So beyond doing simple things like SSHing and, uh, and FTPing files, uh, OO also provides the ability to integrate with uh, other systems management products like from BMC, CA, uh, IBM, and of course HP. And if we look at HP uh, Operations Manager, you know, there's a set of uh, operations uh, that can be performed so we can actually add some of these uh, instances running in the Amazon Cloud into our monitoring system uh, automatically as well. Uh, we can also use ticketing 
uh, checks with ticketing systems uh, to uh, you know make sure that someone has been approved before those instances get created. So it really allows an enterprise to add a lot of its own automation around uh, the basic um, operations that uh, Amazon EC2 provides. So I hope that's been useful, and that's all for now.